treated in our sewage treatment plants. But, they, but it really just serves that one purpose. Um, but rather, uh, be thinking about uh, systems that, that uh, provide uh, co-benefits and multiple uh, uh, sort of layers of infrastructure into the city fabric itself. And this is some work we're doing in the, on the Brooklyn Waterfront Greenway uh, in Greenpoint, sort of the idea of mimicking the dendritic pattern uh, that one finds in nature using the city streets uh, as a collection system, uh, as a treatment system um, before uh, discharging water into the bay, bypassing the our overloaded sewage treatment system at the mine sewer overflow system uh, in the process, and providing green, uh, greenways and um, uh, living plants uh, and greenery uh, and amenity uh, to the folks in the neighborhood. Um, and then finally, sort of at the larger watershed scale, we can think about protecting um, sort of source protection, about uh, thinking about our reservoir system of fresh water, um, and thinking about how we manage the landscapes that provide uh, clean water into that system, uh, both through, um, this is a water reservoir in New Jersey, and we were involved uh, in an effort to protect the New Jersey Highlands as sort of the source of the springs and streams that feed those reservoirs. Again, a very resilient strategy, a no storage system of the hill for a uh, for soils that can help ensure adequate supplies for the future. That's uh, really good. You know, as in closing, let me just, um, you know, just again reference kind of the theme of this conference and transformation and the idea that really, um, as we think towards the future, um, it's going to be ever more important to be thinking about the idea of, again, yeah, not so much not investing in the future, because that's clearly all that's going to be needed, but more of investing smarter and be thinking about uh, ways in which those investments cross across sectors, cross and across geographies. Uh, I think it's a real challenge, um, certainly a political, uh, uh, you know, uh, political uh, uh, leadership doesn't always think across political boundaries, doesn't always think past the next election cycle. Um, it's certainly difficult, and as our next speaker, with our law and our test to, it's almost difficult to get bureaucracies uh, to work together. Um, they each have their own goals, their own missions. Uh, I know our work in Brooklyn, for example, it's been a challenge to get the DOT, Parks Department, um, and city planning to talk together, to talk the same language about, about managing stormwater. Uh, their missions are much more focused on delivering services uh, as it's been traditionally defined. And so um, it's not easy, uh, but I think it's certainly a challenge that I hope I think this conference can help uh, lead us forward. Thank you. Uh, 
right now has a, uh, an issue with this combined to overflow system in that uh, what it, because uh, the city's uh, system combines both rainwater and sewage flows, uh, at times the rain events of uh, really only you know, about a half inch or more, um, that system becomes overloaded. And uh, because of that, in many parts of the city, uh, the untreated system, water system uh, sewage has to go to be discharged but it's left them into uh, the bay because the sewage treatment plant can't handle that increased volume. And, um, and so what what the, the a lot of folks, not just us, have been working on are ways of trying to again sort of mimic the natural patterns of the natural systems that, that were here once uh, by essentially retaining uh, stormwater on site uh, through a variety of mechanisms um, and then having it really, really slowly either back into the combined overflow system or uh, directly sort of beyond the weir, uh, directly into the harbor after it's been treated through soil. Um, there's a number of different sort of layers of that that one can think about, ranging from, you know, the waters and the loops, uh, to, uh, again, bioswales, uh, to uh, detention systems that function on the street, but really the, the sort of salient point in all of them from a planning point of view is that it's taking uh, stormwater, which is really the, a, um, the responsibility of the Department of Environmental Protection uh, and the State Department of Environmental Conservation, um, and forcing, if you will, private landowners, uh, Department of Transportation, Department of Parks, and others, other sort of property owners, to address that on site. And you know, whereas the sort of standard engineering response for the last you know, a few years has been, you know, take the water, get it off the site as quickly as possible. So what what we try to do, you know, again, as I alluded to, you know, really the challenge uh, in doing this is the idea that um, is sort of breaking down the barriers between the bureaucracies and getting folks to feel responsible for the water. In a collective sense, and that's something you know. There's no city, you know. There's no city of water in that sense that sort of trans that takes water from sort of the source to its discharge discharge point. And so uh, through projects like this and the other ones that I was mentioning in the Bronx and elsewhere, uh, part of the issue is really trying to get folks to sort of accommodate that those solutions on their property, on their watch, and their time. Does this work? Uh, hi, I'm, my brother from Platt. Uh, Rob, one of the, your two most favorite islands, Manhattan and Governor's Island, uh, more than half of the of Governor's Island, as I understand, is landfill from the Lexington Avenue subway. And so what is going to be done with the fill from the second avenue of the subway? <laughs> Yeah, you know, the question I know a lot of folks have referred to uh, this era as the sort of the golden age of fill because of both Second Avenue, the um, you know the Arc Tunnel that's coming in New Jersey uh, in Penn Station, uh, along with a number of other projects around the city, the Dredgen uh, project, uh, perhaps most most importantly uh, that's going around the harbor. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a big question. Uh, I know Justice Hassel is here from the Turner Foundation uh, somewhere, and uh, certainly the idea of how we deal with this mud, how we deal with these dredge sediments, the Second Avenue uh, material is critically important. Um, clean fill is very valuable, and you know, can find them only relatively easily. Um, it's really that sort of uh, you know contaminated or semi-contaminated that's much more of a challenge. Um, and, on Governor's Island, there's been a lot of discussion about creating some pills. In fact, that's the sort of part of the park master plan is to create um, some topography on the southern half of the island over that Lexington Avenue fill um, using kind of gabby and kind of system. Um, and then perhaps the dredge sediment uh, could become part of that solution. Um, certainly, there's going to be a real need for creativity if we're going to continue to be able to dredge the harbor and deal with those sediments. Uh, 